Hey folks, it's Ian New from Gemba Red, and today we're going to talk about the penetration of EMFs through the body. So we've got our Alpha Labs milligauss meter about two inches away from the Shenzhen Idea Light uh, 450 Max C, and so the milligauss is the magnitude of the magnetic field, similar to how we use intensity to quantify the magnitude of light. We usually use milligauss or micro Tesla to quantify. Uh, EMFs and uh, ELF EMFs at uh, extremely low frequencies. So at two inches away, we're getting five or six milligauss. So let's see what happens when I put my hand in between the meter and the source of the EMFs. So as you can see, my hand is blocking most of the light, the red and near infrared light. Perhaps only a trace amount can get through if you watch some of my previous videos. But you can see it barely had any effect on the milligauss readings. It's still kind of bouncing around between four up to about six milligauss. So there is some variability. Maybe there's uh, some sort of process cycling inside the panel on the power drivers or the fans. Um, so it is kind of up and down, you know, in that range around four to six milligauss. But my hand has not caused any change. So I haven't changed the distance or anything else, but my hand is not blocking the magnetic field. So that means when I put my hand in the field, 100% of the magnetic field is penetrating through the skin. There's no blocking that my skin offers. There's no, there's nothing. It just, the magnetic field does not really care about my hand being in the magnetic field. It's still going either around it or most of it is just going straight through it because it just doesn't care. Now remember some of the adage that we've been talking about is that longer wavelengths like the 1060s have a little bit deeper penetration, uh, likely because there's less scattering of that wavelength and that wavelength is a low point of water absorption. If you, if you try to quantify the wavelength of a magnetic field, it's on the scale of several kilometers long as opposed to nanometers. And so that's why PEMF, pulsed electromagnetic therapy, has been approved for uh, healing bone issues. So it's very well known, it's already accept established and accepted by the FDA itself that, you know, it can penetrate very deep and affect the bones. As opposed to red light therapy has not been approved for anything so deep. And now I'll put this aluminum plate in between the panel and the meter. And we, again, we don't see much of a shift. There's a little bit of a shift down. It doesn't peak up to six anymore. It kind of stays between three up to the high five. So it had a very small effect. If you add some metal shielding, it can only you know reduce that magnetic field a little bit. And so that's why distance, the inverse square law, you know, applies to EMFs as well as light, because uh, they're both electromagnetic frequencies. So the you know the inverse square law is your best protection against magnetic fields is to increase your distance away because it's very hard to block it. I think it's ironic that a lot of people are saying that non-thermal, non-ionizing EMFs don't have any effect on the body, but red and near infrared light are non-thermal and non-ionizing the photobiomodulation. There's thousands of studies that have non-thermal effect from red and near infrared radiation. So hopefully red and near infrared light therapy, photobiomodulation, is opening people's eyes to obviously artificial lighting or, you know, the wrong types of lightings and the wrong types of EMFs in your environment will cause an effect on your cells in a non-thermal, non-ionizing way. And so if you actually want the benefits of a deep penetrating, non-thermal, non-ionizing EMF, then you might consider PEMF because it does have an effect on the cell. And just like, uh, you know, red light therapy, EMFs and PEMF have a biphasic response. If you're exposed to it for too much, too long, too high of a you know, milligauss or magnitude uh, for a long period of time, that's where the problems of EMFs come into play. That's what's being studied right now. And so here's the baseline measurement with the device being off. So maybe there's about one milligauss in my environment. And then when we turned on the panel, that is what brought it up to, you know, four or five or six. Um, so, you know, the difference is the contribution from the light panel itself. And, the, you know, the, about one milligauss is in my environment already. And I was just reading a PEMF study where they were saying that you don't need to make skin contact, you don't need to make pressure on the tissue, and that they were confident that even with non-contact treatment, the EMFs would be penetrating through the hair and through the fur. 
And that's ironically the opposite kind of indications we get for photobiomodulation. Usually they recommend using skin contact and some pressure to maximize the penetration and the absorption. And we know with red light therapy and near infrared light, it's very hard for that light to penetrate through hair and through fur. Uh, so we can see how superior they believe the, the EMF penetration is that they don't need to make contact and it's going through hair and fur without any problems. So that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in.